the Intel versus AMD debate is as divisive as the Android versus iPhone argument, with fanboys on each side, ready with pitchforks, except it's more like relentless keyboard warrior skills. Worry not, because today, today is the day that nothing changes as I continue this tradition by bringing you another Intel versus AMD comparison video, adding more frustration to your confusion. What do you think? I'm not about to solve one of life's greatest mysteries in this video now, am I? Let's tech it out. Healing Tags and welcome, this is Ash from Heal My Tech and if you're new here on this channel, we do reviews, repairs and tutorials of tech so you can unleash your true potential by subscribing and enabling the bell notification icon so that I can help you go from newbie to techie and please support the channel by clicking my Amazon affiliate links for US and UK in the description below. This is the One PC to Rule Them All series, the show where I give you full responsibility to decide every aspect of my next PC build for 2019. At the end of the video, I will post up a new poll for you to vote in the community tab on YouTube mainly. In this part 7, we take a look at our last poll where I ask you the ultimate CPU question, Intel or AMD? I didn't specify whether it's Intel versus AMD for gaming or for productivity, but with an outstanding majority vote, to no one's surprise, you guys voted for AMD. I posted the poll on the community tab of YouTube, Twitter, Reddit and Facebook. The only outlier was on Facebook where Intel won, but we did only get 3 votes cause I suck at social media and Facebook is a dinosaur by now. So let's check out some of the comments you guys made for your choices. On the community tab poll, Creepjack says, Ryzen 3 2200G at $80 is better than an i5-7400 at $184 for more than half the price. Taibuga GameStar comments, sorry for mispronouncing your name, AMD more value buy and Kinan135 writes, AMD Ryzen 5 to 600 because of its price to performance ratio. I couldn't agree more, all around better value. We'll expand on that later. On Reddit, Collective Decentry writes, AMD for compatibility for Zen 2 plus slash 3 on AM4, especially since this is their first run at 7 nanometer. Zen 3 should work on X470s for people not caring about PCI 4. Intel for raw performance, if you degaff, degaff, about buying a new mobile when Skylake i10 uh, series, the KOF drops, except leaks say that they will be priced competitive with AMD. I like underdogs, but I've had my 8700K overclock at 5 GHz since 2017 and it hasn't let me down. Dude, you're being reasonable and fair in your analysis. Where's the passion? Where's the fanboyism? This is the internet! Main caca, sorry again. I think one PC to rule them all is very difficult. Well, Mr. Hunt, this is not mission impossible, but mission difficulty Lee trying to heal my tech without a team, so give me a break. Because it heavily depends on the programs you run, if you have programs that can utilize all the cores, AMD Zen 2 will have the advantage. If you want to build a pure gaming rig, it's still Intel that's number one. So I guess one PC to rule them all is not really possible. Dude! Relax, that's twice now. Have some faith, will you? For example, if you do a lot of CAD slash CAM work, you will benefit heavily from Nvidia Quadros, but they are worse in performance for gaming. Then you should take a 2080 Ti for gaming. It's not possible to have one PC to rule them all. Man, what did I do to you? Where's the love and support? Unsubscribe. Actually, this wasn't Reddit, and you're probably not even subscribed anyways, so subscribe. I need the attention. It is however possible to have a gaming PC that's the best. Put an i9 9900K and a 2080 Ti and all of those costly other hardware like the NVMe and a good PSU and a mobile that will make it easier to overclock like Maximus or Aorus Master and some 3600MHz 32GB memory. To get the best workhouse, I guess wait for the 3950X with a X570 mobile and PCIe 4 NVMe and put 2 to 3 NVIDIA RTX Quadro 6000 in there and you have an awesome workstation. Maybe combine it with a 128 gigabyte of 4000 megahertz memory but that is pretty much really expensive and won't work as good in games you don't say i'm not lying tech tips small channel heal my tech subscribe 
And there are some further discussions between them too. If you want to read up, go to Reddit or pause the screen here. On a side note, when we decided on naming the series One PC to Rule Them All, maybe the branding was a little ambitious because I don't really mean Rule Them All. I just mean Rule Them All. And you put all the three main OS on there, Windows, Linux and Mac OS, and use each of them as a daily driver to crown the winner eventually as an end user for content creation first and foremost, and secondary for gaming. Still, let's do some points summary. On the blue side, Intel offers benefits such as lower TDP, that's thermal design power for you non-techies, means less heat output from the processor, higher single core processing speed and power, however, at a much higher price tag compared to the red team. AMD, on the other hand, has always been the budget-friendly platform, especially at the first and mid-tier. And now with the release of AMD Ryzen 9 3900X, no doubt it's outshining the i9-9900K at the $500 price point. And you get a decent cooler as well with Ryzen. Their unlocked CPUs across the range are another USP for AMD, unlike Intel, and a dream for overclockers. And the massive upgrade pathways and support on the M4 platform until 2020, as well as backwards compatibility with previous Ryzen Gen 1 and Gen 2 series, make AMD even more appealing. Something which Intel doesn't seem to value with the ever-changing motherboard sockets. And of course, let's not forget integrated graphics. Unless I'm not aware of recent changes, this is also a plus in AMD's corner as they have always outperformed Intel's integrated graphics. I'm not going to bore you with all the technical specs for two reasons. One, there are plenty of in-depth tech reviews on YouTube and elsewhere for all you geeks to drool over. And secondly, for a lot of us, the theoretical performance advantage numbers don't mean diddly squapped. Even if Intel has higher single core clock speed, it makes no difference or not much difference to actual real world applications. I've talked about it before, the 8020 principle, no thank you. You can keep your high clock speed Intel and I will keep my money and carry up speeding my workload with more efficient work strategies. The word better is so subjective when not quantified or qualified. A Ferrari is faster than a Peel P50, but at over $250,000, how is it better for the individual? If the question is which CPU is faster in an Intel vs AMD gaming poll, then Intel would win no doubt. But can you even tell without measuring FPS on the monitor? Could you really tell in a blind test which platform you're playing on between Intel and AMD as far as the processor is concerned? And FPS is not the be and all to enjoy a gaming experience. Now don't get me wrong, if Intel calls me up and says they want me to have their latest high-end CPUs to test and review and keep, I will own that sucker. Until then, our pockets will continue to dictate our purchasing decision, especially when AMD Ryzen is so freakishly awesome. And there is one last reason why AMD is better than Intel and that's Apple. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Apple only puts Intel chips in all their computers. And in my book, as far distant as I can be from Apple, the better for me. Unless again, Apple comes forward with that sponsorship deal. Don't judge me. I'm weak, small channel, remember? Okay, so you guys know what we decided on already, right? And that is the AMD Ryzen 7 to 700X. And the reasons for that can be found in this video here in our One PC to Rule Them All series. As for today's poll, here are the questions. One, should we do an AMD versus Nvidia video next? I did ask that question parallel to the Intel versus AMD processors poll. I would assume that the choice for this one is pretty obvious, but that's up to you to decide. Two, should we just do a video on all the things you need to build a PC? And I mean everything. Many build guides leave out a few things, unfortunately, and we want to be very thorough. Three, should we just crack on with the build aspect straight away? And four, if we do, that would involve me transferring my existing PC components to a different case though, which can be a video in its own merit as I will be reusing the Fractal Design R5 for the new build. So go to the community tab, poll and vote as usual. Guys, I am finally ready to start the actual build as I have cleared my previous workspace for extra space in the last few days and I am done with all other major videos. Although there are lots of different topics I would like to cover, I think it's time to put them to the side and focus 
on the series as you guys wanted a daily upload schedule so i am planning to start 1st of august 2019 just a few more days and i'm still waiting for an artistic one amongst you to help with the series thumbnail template so before you go make sure you check out my other videos on the channel leave me a like a comment and don't forget to subscribe and enable the bell notification icon so i can help you go from newbie to techie so you can unleash your true potential i will see you in the next one go take it out Oh, <laughs>